Welcome to Top 30, I'm Kristen Smith. And I'm Richard Bacon, and here are the Top 30 stories in 30 minutes. Young workers can use a certain type of investment to help maximize their retirement earnings in the future. Experts say more millennials are looking into Roth IRA accounts because it's beneficial for people who are just starting their career. Roth IRAs are investments made on after-tax income and then can be withdrawn tax-free after the investor turns 59 and a half. The benefits for young people is the tax rate is based on their current income level. So if they're at the beginning of their career, the rate is typically lower than the tax rate when they are older Older and making more money. There are restrictions though. To contribute, single people cannot make more than $135,000, $199,000 for married couples, and the max you can invest is $5,500 a year. Experts say a little money saved now can go a long way towards retirement. Time now for a Top 30 Health Roundup. A new study in the Annals of International Medicine claims drinking hot tea can increase the risk of getting esophageal cancer for people who smoke or drink alcohol regularly. The data show the risk increased by 200 to 500%. The CDC says one in five children aged 5 to 11 has at least one untreated decayed tooth, making tooth decay the most common chronic condition in children. Those decays can lead to future problems with speaking, eating, or learning. Experts say take your kids to the dentist starting as early as two years old, make the visit fun, teach them about the importance of hygiene, and nutrition. The American Heart Association is warning women about the risks of breast cancer treatment, saying radiation and chemotherapy could have a negative impact on the health of their heart. The organization is urging women undergoing treatment to discuss the potential risks with their doctor and to maintain a healthy diet, exercise, and monitor blood pressure and cholesterol. And that is today's Top 30 Health Roundup. In 2017, Netflix subscribers collectively watched over 1 billion hours of television every week. But the shows that people devoured varied widely across the United States. The website HighSpeedInternet.com analyzed Google Trends to find out which show was the most popular in each state. Surprisingly, Orange is the New Black was the most Googled show in 15 states, sweeping much of the Midwest and Southeast. The true crime documentary American Vandal came in second as the most Googled show in five states. Considering the show just premiered in September of 2017, it made a big impact fast. Other than those two clear front runners, each state had pretty unique tastes. 14 states had favorites no other state had, and another 10 shared their favorite show with just one other state. So while we're a diverse country with diverse tastes, one thing that binds us all together is the huge number of hours we spend watching Netflix. The 90s had its fair share of iconic TV shows, and that decade also launched the careers of some of our favorite stars. We're taking a look back at how they first stole our hearts and what they're up to now. Sarah Michelle Gellar is best known for starring on the supernatural drama Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Since then, she married fellow 90s favorite Freddie Prince Jr., who starred in the I Know What You Did Last Summer franchise. Gellar now spends her time working on her baking kit company, Foodsters, and Prince is a happy stay-at-home dad to their two children. Melissa Joan Hart dominated the 90s in Clarissa Explains It All and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. She's since starred in many TV movies and is the mother of three children. Mario Lopez stormed onto the scene in acid wash jeans as A.C. Slater in Saved by the Bell. He's now a prolific TV host working on Extra for the past 10 years. And while we'll never forget when they first stepped into the spotlight, we're glad they've left the scrunchies and backwards hats behind. A controversial satellite secretly launched is now orbiting the Earth. It was sent to space to give people a disco ball to view in the night sky. A company called Rocket Lab sent this into outer space. It's called the Humanity Star, and it's made out of 65 highly reflective panels. It spins rapidly, creating a blinking effect like a disco ball. There is really no scientific reason it's up there. Instead, the company said it launched Humanity Star to provide a shared experience for humanity, adding no matter where you are or what's happening in your life, you'll be able to see it. There's even a website set up so you can track it and see when it will be visible. It will circle the globe every 90 minutes and be in space until about the end of October before it's pulled back into Earth's gravity and burns up upon re-entry. 
Welcome back. Researchers say an increase in connectivity through cell phones and tablets may be leading to an increase in anxiety for Americans. I imagine that's probably true. Yeah, right? because there's, Quite, yeah. in our phone there's everything. The research also showed that what one thing people do, I think famously as well, on things like social media through their phones is you tend to follow people who are like you or have the same opinions as you which creates a sort of unhealthy echo chamber of the same world view. And actually one thing that is quite healthy to do is to follow people with whom you disagree. Right. And it's quite hard to do in it. I do it a lot and it feels almost a little bit grotty when you go, ooh, I'm follow that yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course their <laughs> views will wind you up and that can be a waste of time. But I think it is psychologically said to be more generally healthy. You're getting a different perspective. get different perspectives. On the rare occasion that I am rushing around in the morning and I forget my phone at home, I have the most peaceful days. <laughs> I, I really After do. After the first hour where you're annoyed you've lost the phone. Right, and, then, and, and yeah, yeah, I can't communicate with the nanny and annoy my husband with my random text throughout the day, but all things considered, yeah. I have a very smooth it's day. Great. Because we can be present. A couple of my friends, when they go on holiday, they take their phones and iPads and they put them in a safe in a hotel and leave them until their holiday's over. That's bold. Which is something I would like to do and something I know I will never do. <laughs> Alrighty, let's talk about snacking. Now, do you snack much, Richard? Not really. No? I've gotten quite good like that. I've okay. recently changed my diet. It's because you're trying to get it right, get I'm it tight. To get, I'm trying to get it right, I'm trying to get it right. <laughs> That's true, I've never heard that phrase, but it's correct. <laughs> it's a phrase I like. Well, here's uh, why I ask. New data shows genetics play a role in your child's snacking patterns. So researchers studied preschoolers and found most liked sweet, bitter, or fatty foods based on genetics, based on what their parents like. And mm. I think this is totally true. I can see it in my own life because my son, my three-year-old son, is totally a mini-me. Yeah. He is so picky about about what his food looks like and the texture of his food. That's and a good thing. He totally it? gets that from me. The problem with it being genetic, I suppose, implies there's not that much you can do about it. In, you know, <laughs> right. So here we go. I mean, my, I don't snack that much. My kids do snack a lot, but that's. But I have no discipline. My kids will just say, Dad, can I have a chocolate cookie? Yeah, can I have some M&Ms? M &M's? Can I have a Diet Coke? <laughs> am, I, am I setting them up for a host of major problems later in life? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let history decide. <laughs> Here's another story. A San Antonio apartment complex is testing dog feces Ew. for DNA <laughs> to make sure pet owners pick up after their after their dog. It's a remarkable thing, this. It right? is. is that when you when you get an apartment in this building, your dog has to have a swab. You know, as if it's been arrested. Yeah. Right? They've got a swab in the dog's mouth. They keep the DNA, and then, as I explained there, if you leave your stuff behind. They'll cross-reference it. It's accountability. Yeah. Accountability works. This is actually working. Now that people know that their dog has to be tested, their DNA has to be tested, and if they see a little pile, that's going to be tested as well. And if it's you, you're going to get a knock on the door saying, hey, we know you yeah. didn't clean up the situation. And look, DNA is very, very accurate. It's like the worst ever episode of CSI, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It's, well, it's only it's a one in 12 million chance <laughs> your dog is not guilty of leaving this feces behind. The <laughs> dogs are probably is. hiding in the back like, no. The not. least sexy use of, of brilliant science I have ever heard of <laughs> in my life. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Americans are facing growing uncertainty about the cost of their health insurance and whether they'll be covered at all. A recent study by the Urban Institute found that about 9 million fewer Americans, it's quite a number, oh, yeah. will be insured by 2019. Premiums on other health plans could go up by as much as 18%. 9 million by as soon as 2019. Big number. It is. So if you break that down, some of those people will instead get short term, this is now on offer, short term health care coverage between yeah. three months and a year. However, Kristen, the Congressional Budget Office does not consider consumers with such policies to be insured. You know, this was based, the estimate yeah. of 9 million was based on a few factors. The one you mentioned, also um, the reduction of advertising and some other things. Yeah. Uh, the president and the congressional Republicans are saying, you know, the goal is to give Americans more options here. It, there's lots of debate about Obamacare and the good and the bad bits. One thing that was, I think, good about it is that it covered people with pre-existing conditions. That's huge, yeah. Right, and these new short-term plans do not cover people with pre-existing conditions. Well, how about this? There's a new computer game. There is. Uh, it's not supposed to be fun, 
Though you and I both played it and we right. had a great time. <laughs> but this game might teach you something. It's called Bad News, and it's designed to help people understand how fake news spreads by putting players in charge of their own fake news empire. Yeah. So this game was designed by a team of media experts and journalists, and like I said, it's actually quite fun. Uh, the creators wanted it to be a vaccine against fake news. You learn how to spot it, you learn you know, what to watch out for. You know, you can also see, though, how easy it is to create fake news. Yeah. You play it and you'll say, right, choose a name for your pretend new, new fake news site. And uh -huh. it'll be things, you know, so I chose, I think, The Honest Truth. <laughs> and then you put it on there. And then you, and then it also shows you how easy it is to set up parody accounts that look just like real accounts. Yeah. And, so, and then you say something ridiculous about North Korea. Suddenly you've got 2,000 more followers. And I'm watching it going, oh. What's your fake news empire called again? Well, I'm glad you asked me that, Kristen, <laughs> uh, Because I am the editor in chief of this fake news site. It is called Honest News Online. And look out for it, because it's entirely dishonest. We'll be right back. In today's hometown stories from Fox 13 Tampa Bay, with a visit to the hair cuttery, you can look good and feel good. For every paying customer, a haircut is donated to the homeless. This is a way that they possibly could get back into the work field. Maybe they have an interview coming up and they need to look nice and sharp. It's real nice to know that, uh, that a contribution that, that you make is going to go ahead and go to someone else who needs help. Our next story from KTVU, Heather Morrissey cleaned her ring after getting lotion on it and left it on some tissues to dry. Well, later, forgetting what was inside, she flushed it, realizing her mistake as the ring went down the drain. She opens that door and the look on her face. Friends and neighbors sprung into action. Here's what they did. They cut into the pipe, hoping to catch the ring before it went into the sewer. Thanks to the quick thinking of her community, Heather is once again wearing her beautiful ring. Our final story from Fox 5 DC. Basketball is fun, but at Matta Woman Middle School, it's also about responsibility. Instead of turning away those who don't make the team, Coach Smith came up with the idea to hold a tournament. The only catch, students would have to do well in class and get weekly approvals from their teachers in order to participate. If you don't try hard in school, then you won't get what you want out in school or in playing basketball. After all, a great player has to have skills both on and off the court. Do you have trouble falling asleep at night? Well, an easy life hack may help you out. Cody Goff, host of the Curiosity Podcast, joins us from his studio with more. Cody? Thanks, Kristen. It's hard enough to get a good night's sleep when you're busy and you've got a million things on your mind, right? I mean, even when you do finally get to bed, all that stress can keep you awake. Fortunately, researchers have found a way to help you pass out and you don't even need to count sheep. In a 2018 study, researchers had volunteers mostly in their 20s, pop into a sleep lab to measure how well they slept. Right before they went to bed, some of the participants made a to-do list, writing about everything they had to do over the next few days. The volunteers who wrote a to-do list fell asleep 10 minutes faster than those who didn't. It took them about 15 minutes on average. Surprised? Don't be. Other studies have shown that just writing things down is quite a life hack. Writing about a stressful event can reduce anxiety, and students remember class material better when they write instead of type notes. It's science! So the next time you want to make a change in your life, try to pencil in some writing time. Kristen? Great tip. Thanks, Cody. You can check out more on curiosity.com. Children's books are oftentimes the gateway to imagination and the building blocks that help children evolve into who they become as an adult. Actor John Krasinski of The Office told First Book about his love of Roald Dahl's James and the Giant Peach, saying these worlds he created had the nonsensical appeal of Dr. Seuss, while at the same time, the characters were all written with wonderful complexities and enormous heart. Likewise, best-selling author Stephen King says the book that made him become a horror writer was Dr. Seuss's The Five hundred hats of Bartholomew Cubbins. Finally, author and life coach Tony Robbins says Shel Silverstein's The Giving Tree is the essential childhood book. No one so purely evokes emotions of the heart and soul as giving, receiving, rejection, expectation, love, and sorrow like Shel Silverstein. When children read, they allow books and words to inspire and shape their minds. 
One of America's most iconic brands is going electric. Harley Davidson will build its first all electric motorcycle by the year 2020. It's an evolution of a bike called the Livewire, the company made as a prototype in 2014. It could go from zero to 60 miles an hour in less than four seconds, but its range was just 55 miles. EV batteries have improved dramatically since then. The new Harley will compete with electric bikes like the Zero that can go more than 200 miles. For over a century, Harleys have been identified by the rumble of their exhaust. Because this bike is electric, the company has had to figure out another sound. One Harley Davidson executive told The Drive, we did not want a normal sounding electric motorcycle. I often refer to it as sounding like a jet fighter. The announcement comes amid declining sales for Harley. The company hopes an electric bike will help it to attract younger buyers. One Texas woman has made it her mission to feed the homeless. Every week, Joan Sheever and her helpers drive a food truck to several sites around San Antonio. It's called the Chow Train. The meals are all free and the staff are volunteers. Since 2005, the truck has served over 100,000 dinners, Joan says, are restaurant quality. But the Chow Train is about so much more than delicious food. It's about giving back. The team helped out after tornadoes in Missouri and Oklahoma when the Texas Gulf Coast was devastated by Hurricane Harvey, the chow train was there. The nonprofit began as a parenting tool. Joan's preteen kids weren't happy about what was on their dinner plates. So Joan threw some food together and told the kids they were going for a ride to feed people with nothing who weren't complaining. She says, it makes you feel really good to give. Scientists are studying woodpeckers in an effort to keep football players safe. Woodpeckers smack their head into a tree thousands of times every day to find food or build a nest. Researchers say it's the closest animal behavior they have to football players who collide during games and hit their head numerous times. Originally, scientists thought woodpeckers' brains were protected since they survived millions of years, but new research shows there's a buildup of a protein in the brain that resembles those found in athletes with head trauma. So now scientists are trying to find out how the woodpecker's body deals with this buildup of protein. Does it have a mechanism that minimizes the impact on behavior? If scientists can find a connection, they want to see if there is any way to replicate it in humans. This would potentially minimize the effect of head trauma and make football and many other sports safer to play. Food trends come and go, but the recent truffles craze looks like it's here to stay. Coco Dominguez from Fox 26 in Houston caught up with some chefs to fill you in on what you might be missing. Coco? Truffle mac and cheese, truffle fries, this oddly shaped and funky smelling fungi is all the rage right now for chefs who are adding it to some of our favorite dishes. That fungi that's a lot like a mushroom can cost thousands of dollars per pound. Each year from September through December, hunters use dogs to search for those little gems that are often found growing at the roots of trees. They're traditionally shaved over rice and pasta or egg dishes, but their spike in popularity has been showing up in all kinds of recipes. So what does this fungus taste like? They have an earthy flavor, sometimes a hint of garlic, and they're much stronger than a mushroom, a lot more expensive too. So next time you see a truffle pop up on the menu, take a taste and worry about the price later. Well, I think we all deserve to splurge a little bit on truffles every now and then. Thanks, Coco. There is a robotic glove that helps people with spinal cord injuries regain the use of their hands so they can brush their teeth or hold a cup again. It's called Neo Mano, made by a Korean company called Neofect, known for innovation in rehabilitation tools. The glove is made of leather and resembles an archery glove covering just the thumb, index, middle finger, but it features titanium wires that help move those three fingers in a grip and release motion. The glove looks promising for those with spinal cord injuries and is expected to hit the market sometime this year. Your teen years used to end at 19. Some scientists say that could change. In an opinion piece for the Lancet Health Journal, a group of scientists write that adolescents should begin at 10 and last until age 24. Some of their reasons are biological. In the developed world, puberty used to begin at 14. Better nutrition has dropped that number to about 10. The doctors also say that the brain continues to develop past age 20. Teens are also staying in school longer 
and getting married later. Since 1970, the average age at which American women get married has gone up four years later to 27. The letter's authors say, although many adult legal privileges start at age 18 years, the adoption of adult roles and responsibilities generally occurs later. They argue laws and social programs should be expanded to protect the age group. That would give the world something it doesn't need, another 1.8 billion teenagers. Thanks for watching. You can catch up on past episodes of Top 30 now on Hulu. You can also download the Top 30 mobile app and visit our website. We want to hear from you, so connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Like, follow, and subscribe to at Top 30 TV for interviews and exclusive web content. We'll see you next time on Top 30.